Welcome to The Kitchen Table, a show dedicated to helping you escape diet culture, gain trust with food, honor your body, and live a brighter life. Hello and welcome back to The Kitchen Table. I am so glad you're here. I'm your host, Alicia Brown, an anti-diet registered dietitian nutritionist. And hey, I call myself this anti-diet dietitian, but before we dive into the topics of this episode, I just want to clarify what that is. When I say that I'm an anti-diet dietitian, I say that I reject the dieting mentality entirely. We don't talk about methods to intentionally lose weight here. We talk about improving health outcomes by improving our relationship with food in our bodies instead. And typically, if I were to just say, I'm Alicia Brown and I'm a dietitian talking about food, what would you ask me questions about? What do you think that people would ask me questions about? People would ask me questions about weight loss. When I first jumped into my entrepreneurial career as a dietitian, I was primarily thrown into the realm of weight loss because that's by default what people thought I specialized in. People thought that as a dietitian, I must have the key to unlock weight loss. I must have the wisdom or the knowledge of the knowing to help people lose weight, but be healthy while doing it. And I had to climb myself out of that, right? Like I had to find this anti-diet way so I could finally feel like I could talk about health in its entirety, not just physically, but also mentally and emotionally. And that's something that we often neglect. We often neglect our mental and emotional health and just think about the physical aspects of our bodies. And that's not enough. That leads to food obsession. That leads to an enormous amount of food rules. That leads to scrutinizing food labels. It leads to kind of like this on the bandwagon, off the bandwagon, white and black, good or bad relationship with food. And in my practice and in my own personal life too, I found this to be really discouraging and it led to poor health outcomes. So that's all of what I mean by saying like, I'm an anti-diet dietitian, so I can focus on health. And a lot of people think with intuitive eating, like it's an abandonment of health. People think, you know, oh, you must really be letting yourself go if you're pursuing intuitive eating and allowing yourself permission to eat the foods that you want. And I understand why people think that because, you know, we feel safe and secure in those dieting rules, right? Like it provides this illusion of of safety and certainty that we're doing something good for ourselves by cutting out sugar, by cutting out, quote, bad foods. There's like a certainty that we're doing something good for ourselves. But really the paradox in that is by cutting out foods and restricting them, we have a poorer relationship with food and that leads to poor physical, mental, and emotional health as well. And so the paradox is actually allowing ourselves permission to eat the foods first and foremost. That's one step to healing our relationship with food and seeing better health outcomes. Truly. That's what I see in my practice, and that's what we talk about here on the show. So I wanted to just recap on that a little bit before we jump into this conversation today about cutting out sugar. This is a good conversation, and I'm going to keep it brief and to the point so we can just digest exactly why incorporating sugar into the ways that we eat can actually promote better health. That's totally probably the exact opposite of everything that you've heard before. <laughs> yeah, I know that you've heard from, from messages from diet culture and from maybe other dietitians and from naturopathic doctors, from other quote, you know, health experts and doctors and you name it, um, fitness influencers on the internet and social media. I'm sure in magazines, and and we can go on and on in ways that diet culture just has infected our world and our space. (laughs) Infected is a little intense, but it seems like it's so pervasive. Um, I'm sure you've heard the message that cutting out sugar leads to better health, that Americans today are eating too much sugar, and it's something that we need to really scale back on with the, quote, you know, obesity epidemic, with the, quote, um, seeing increased larger bodies, you know, it's the thought that sugar is one of the problems. And I don't think that there's a true obesity epidemic. I think more so there are so many more people having a poor relationship with food today that's affecting our health in more ways. That's a bigger conversation to have. And there's such a resistance to that. There's such a resistance to accepting and embracing our bodies and allowing ourselves to have a better relationship with food that I see it um, kind of like 
building more of a momentum and, and leading to poor health outcomes as a nation and in our families and, and in ourselves too. And so that's what I want to talk about today more specifically is this restriction and specifically cutting out sugar. And I hope by the end of this episode that you can see that actually including sugar into the diet, including sugar into the diet, either by you know, having it be in natural foods or having it be an added, added sugar in foods in whatever way sugar is in a food, like you can have it. And by allowing yourself that permission, it can lead to better health outcomes than restricting or cutting out sugars from the diet every time. And just to unpack that a little bit further, when we restrict a food, we just want it more. That is like something so fundamental to just like human psychology I'm going to use like a little kid example because um, I think of this like with Amelia all the time. Like if I give Amelia all the toys on the floor and I say, okay, Amelia, she's my eight month old daughter, mind you, you know, she's just exploring like what toys are. I'm going to say, you can have all of these toys and I'm going to be on Instagram for a minute on my phone, right? Like I'm just going to like send a little DM. I'm going to do a message. Guess what she wants? She doesn't want any of the blocks. She doesn't want any of the plush toys. She doesn't want any of the whatever is on the floor, which is a bunch of things right now. I mean, we've got oodles and oodles of toys after Christmas, okay? We've got so many toys. Guess what she wants? She wants what I have. She wants the phone. She wants the thing that she knows I don't want her to have, right? (laughs) And if you had any, you know, experience with, with kids and toys, try to say that they can't have the one thing. They can have any of the other toys they want, but not this one thing. Guess what they want? They want that one thing. <laughs> no matter what it is, no matter how boring it is, no matter whatever it is, they, they're going to fixate on that thing. That's what happens to our brains, right? It's like that one thing we can't have is the one thing we want. This increases cravings. This increases the thoughts about this food that we're trying to tell ourselves no and inevitably, like, like a waterfall, it just rushes. And we end up most times going for that thing, overindulging on that thing. Maybe you're overeating or feeling so guilty or shameful after having that thing that we told ourselves we couldn't or shouldn't have. This leads to that big diet backlash that leaves us feeling so guilty, has us feeling so ashamed too of how we're interacting with that food or with sugar. And that is really the, a a microcosm of that restrict and binge cycle. And then what happens from there is that we don't trust ourselves with sugar. We say, Oh, we can't have sugar. I won't stop eating it. You know, I can't trust myself with sugar. Don't tempt me with sugar. Have you ever heard of any of these things? And that all like derives from this concept that we're not allowing ourselves to have it. Here's what happens with the reverse, when we allow ourselves to have the thing with sugar. Sugar no longer becomes a big deal. Sugar just becomes sugar. This is something that you might think, oh no, for me, I really have a problem with sugar. I really have a problem. I am really addicted to sugar. I really crave it. There's no way I could let myself have permission to eat it because I couldn't stop eating it. And if that's true for you, I get it. I get it because it's like, there's that lack of trust. Whenever you've allowed yourself to have sugar, it's backfired. You felt guilty and shameful over having it. But the difference there is that you might not have allowed yourself actual permission to have the sugar yet. It was this restricting aspect of it. And then the overeating of it that leaves you to feel like you can't trust yourself with the sugar. When really, if we do allow ourselves full permission to eat the sugar, then eating the sugar doesn't become as much of a big deal. Maybe initially when we're first starting to allow ourselves permission to eat the thing, it's a little more maybe than we would eat if we had a healthy relationship with it. It's kind of like we're making up for lost time of not allowing ourselves to have the sugar, you know? (laughs) Maybe if you've restricted sugar for so long and you're just experimenting with allowing yourself permission, you might eat a little bit more than typical just because it's like a new food. It's like you get to like experience it all over again for the first time, recognizing how much you really enjoy it. But over time, if you continue 
to allow yourself permission in having sugary foods around and things that you enjoy that have sugar in them and allow yourself to have them all of a sudden over time, that sugar does not become much of a big deal. And when we couple that practice of allowing ourselves to eat sugar and having sugary foods around the things that you enjoy, that you feel satisfied with, when we couple that with body attunement and you're able to really enjoy the food, right? Like when you engage in mindful eating practices and it's you and this food you enjoy and you're allowing yourself full permission to have it and you're allowed maybe more to see like how this feels in your body and you're maybe kind of curious about like where that point of satisfaction is with the food. When we layer on um, the concept of permission with body attunement, this is where we are able to then say when we want the sugary thing or not want the sugary thing. Now we've taken the power back from sugar and given it to ourselves to know that we can really decide if it's something that we really want. Your body's not always going to want the sugary thing. I know people say like, I, I would just eat M&Ms all the time. I would just eat this candy or this one thing or the Oreos or whatever fun food that you enjoy, like you name it. People think like, oh, you know, I, I would just eat it all of the time. I wouldn't be able to stop myself from eating it. And I understand that. I understand that lack of body trust. I really deeply do. And it's something that takes a lot of time to, to understand, to understand about ourselves. But really understanding first and foremost that that is rooted in restriction might give us the opportunity to see what might what life might be like without that restriction. What it might be like if we didn't cut out sugar. If we were to allow ourselves permission to eat sugar, what kind of relationship with sugar could we have? And so the truth is that if you allow yourself to eat the sugar and you're able to listen to your body in the process, you'll be able to reclaim the power that sugar once had over you. And you'll be able to eat sugary things and see seating at the point of satisfaction. You'll be able to trust yourself again with the sugar. And that's why cutting out sugar from the diet doesn't work, essentially, right? Cutting it out means restriction. It means not, a lot, not allowing ourselves to have the sugar, and it just makes us want it even more. This doesn't work. And whether this is a conversation about sugar, a conversation about fats, a conversation about whatever thing it is that you want to cut out from your diet, carbs, very popular, carbs are sugars, in fact, (laughs) whatever that thing is, that restriction doesn't exactly work. However, for some people like me in college that really felt like they mastered restriction, like I felt like when I was in college, I could cut things out left and right. I cut out gluten because I had to, I was diagnosed with celiac disease. So I cut out gluten. Wow. Did that have a damaging effect on my health and on my body? Um, because I kept on cutting out more things. It wasn't just the gluten I was cutting out. I cut out sugar. I cut out certain fats. I cut out certain foods. And all of a sudden my list of foods that I ate was so small. My food choices were so restricted And I so, I was so obsessed with food. I thought about food all the time. And I thought this was like my passion as a nutrition student. I thought, oh, I must be just be passionate thinking about the foods that I was eating all the time. No, I was so caught up in disordered eating. I was so caught up in the dieting mentality that I wasted away physically, mentally, and emotionally. I was like separated from myself. I was like gone. And I finally found myself again in eating disorder treatment when I started incorporating back foods and all foods, including foods with sugar, which was a no food, including foods with carbs, which were no for me, including play foods, including fun foods that I would never dare myself eat. That's how I actually found myself again. And the reason I found myself again was because I connected with the enjoyment piece of food. I realized that I can enjoy food. It's not transactional. And that food delivers us so more than purely nutritional value. I think when we're talking about cutting out sugar, we're only thinking that there's no nutritional value in sugar. Therefore, we shouldn't eat it. And I think when we do that, we neglect 
all of the other things that sugar can do for us, all of the other ways that we can, that all of the other ways that food can, can provide us with food can provide us with so much more than simply nutritional value. We get colors, flavors, textures from food. Food can satisfy. I argue that that's actually one of the primary reasons we eat, right? Is to achieve satisfaction. And it's not just like physical satisfaction. It's a mental and emotional satisfaction too. And so when we say just cut out sugar, it doesn't have nutritional value. Like that's true. Like sugar gives us energy, but not really nutritional value. And so when we think of that, we're thinking of a purely transactional mindset with food, negating satisfaction, negating flavor, negating texture, negating all of the like culinary coolness that sugar can do to it. It can act as a preservative. It can lower the melting point. It can help things um, not like freeze as much in the freezer. I mean, like you can take ice cream out of the freezer and eat it almost right away because it doesn't freeze like ice that sugar keeps it um, actually from freezing. (laughs) And so like there are culinary aspects to sugar. There are, sugar is a flavor enhancer. Sugar is a preservative. But when we only think about sugar as something that negates nutritional value, we lose out on all of that awesomeness that sugar can provide. We innately love sugar as humans. We're like in our minds, like we are, we're meant to love sugar. <laughs> it's true. And it's okay. And we can allow ourselves permission to eat that sugar and trust ourselves with it in the process. We are allowed to feel satisfied by the foods that we eat. But if we're feeling scared to satisfy ourselves, it might be because we're not trusting ourselves with food. One reason why we're not trusting ourselves with food, including sugar, is because we're restricting it. When we restrict food, we often don't trust ourselves with it. We often say we're too tempted by it, keep it away. I'm I'm worried that I'm gonna overindulge in it. I'm worried that that's gonna be bad for my health. I'm worried that I'm gonna do something bad for myself by eating that food and there's a lot of fear there. That restriction cultivates fear. And I understand that fear. That fear ate me alive for so long. But actually allowing myself permission got me over that fear and allowed me to feel satisfied with food again. And that satisfaction helped me build body trust. So here's one way on how you can get over the fear of sugar is by incorporating it back in. Think of something that you really enjoy that you haven't had in a long time that includes sugar, that has sugar in it. What is that thing for you? Um, For me? Um, I love Toblerone, um, T-O-B-E-L, Tobler, T-O-B-E, Toblerone. Anyway, do you know those little nougat, chocolate, um, they're kind of in this like um, little triangle shape. I know that they sell them at Target. I really can't find them everywhere, but I found them at Target recently. Um, I remember when I just like loved those things, but I would look at it and say, no. I would say, can't have it. I can't have it. I was in New York city having a really poor relationship with food. And I would, I would be in like little Italy and I would see like nougat, like all over little Italy. And I was, Oh, what, what, what a dream it would be to have that nougat, you know? And I would say, no, I can't have it. Or I would maybe on a whim buy it and then be so guilty over like having a bite of it that I would like, it would wreck the rest of my day. I would throw it away and have to feel so shameful of allowing myself a bite of something that I really enjoyed because actually that enjoyment perpetuated my fear. I was like, oh, I'm loving this too much. Something something must be wrong. And that prompted me to like throw it into the garbage or to feel really bad about myself because that enjoyment made me think that I must have done something wrong. This must be too good to eat. I'm, I'm enjoying this too much. I'm scared by enjoying it. Have you ever felt that way? (laughs) That feels really true. And so if you're feeling that way too, I get it. But if we don't experiment with permission, we will lose out on that enjoyment for the rest of our lives. And for what? For what? You won't be unhealthy if you eat foods with sugar. You actually can have a healthy relationship with sugar, which can actually increase the amount of nutrients that you get in your diet. If you're feeling... Um, like you shouldn't have fruits in your diet because fruits contain sugar. 
will lose out on the enjoyment of eating fruit, but also the nutritional value that fruits do include. You know, um, if we don't allow ourselves to have candies or sweets or the nougat for myself, right? Like the Toblerone, little chocolate nougat, whatever. Um, if I don't allow myself to have that, like, like, like for, for what? Is it because I'm not worthy? Is it because I'm not allowed to have these foods? Is it because I have this persona of being a dietitian, of having to have it, you know, quote unquote, all together of knowing how exactly to eat clean? I talked about eating clean on last week's episode on how people think dietitians like just know the keys to eating clean and know exactly how to tell people on how to eat cleaner and live healthier. Like, oh, that makes me just cringe, you know? And so I really just want to like hone in on this concept of like, actually, eating cleaner is not the way. Actually, removing sugar is not the way. And it doesn't make us healthier. We will live. <laughs> we will live without the ability to fully satisfy if we continue to think that cutting out foods and cutting out sugar is the way um, to better health. The way to better health is not cutting out, but is to add in, you know, in ways that can satisfy. When we satisfy again, we build that body trust. We can trust ourselves with foods that contain sugar. We add more enjoyment back into our life. And when we add more enjoyment, the nutritional value often follows. That's the beauty in so many ways of intuitive eating. So I hope that this um, served you in some way, this conversation about sugar and added sugar back into the diet. And maybe today you'll experiment with maybe including one more food into your, your eating today that includes sugar, something that's a little bit more fun. And I hope that you take a moment to savor it and enjoy it and really allow yourself full permission to eat that thing. Maybe you'll allow yourself to at least have one experience today or in the new future, near future where you're able to like be super mindful, like be hyper mindful if you want to, right? Of just like, it's you and this thing. Oh, you know what's dropping in right now for me to like need to have in this conversation right now? I need like pistachio ice cream. <laughs> I need like pistachio gelato. This is like the moment that I want to create with like this sugar experience, right? So like say for example, like you're like me and you're like, oh, pistachio gelato sounds like the thing. Okay, here's what I would do. You know, maybe I don't generally allow myself to have pistachio gelato, but for this experiment... For this experiment, for what I want to just try out right now, just to see what happens, just see what happens. I'm going to add a scoop of pistachio gelato to my favorite bowl. I'm going to sit at the table and I'm going to take maybe like maybe with some nice music in the background, maybe with the lighting that you want, maybe with a spoon that fits, you know, really well, like in your mouth and feels good when you, you know, put it on your lips, whatever it is. I mean, like get nerdy about this experience, right? Just just get nerdy about it for a second and sit down with your pistachio ice cream and whatever it is for you and just be with the ice cream. What does it taste like? You know, what does it taste like? Is it as good as you thought it was going to be? Is there anything lacking? Is there anything that you'd like to pair with it? How does eating that ice cream change like your body temperature? You know, do you feel colder eating the ice cream? Like, do you want to put a sweater on midway? <laughs> Sometimes that happens with me, you know? Um, but like, just get like super aware of this experience. Be in the experience with the sugary thing. Allow yourself full permission to have it. Say, you know, just for this one circumstance, just this one time, what would it be like if I allowed myself full permission to eat this thing? And what if I just focused on enjoying it? Let me know if that's a positive food experience or a negative one, and if it's something that you think you could do again. If you allow yourself to have the thing that your body wants, that'll build body trust. You could then maybe do this with more things. Maybe you're finding that like the things that you used to restrict, you're kind of adding back in and it's no big deal. And over time, you might feel like your list of you know foods that are safe or that you want to eat, maybe it grows. That's a really darn beautiful thing. That means that you're allowing yourself more variety and you're maybe getting more enjoyment out of food in the experience as well. And that's just one situation that you could do, you know, with sugar when you're trying to add in more foods into your diet or you're trying to, you know, like allow yourself permission, experimenting with the idea anyway of allowing yourself permission to eat these foods. But really, this is something um, that really is like a microcosm to all of what intuitive eating is. It's like really just getting curious about like what an experience could be like. 
And if you're not liking your current experience cutting out sugar, maybe this is a new and totally different radical way of trying something new out. And if you're like, what the heck, let's try it. I love that approach. If you're like, what the heck, sugar's, cutting out sugar has never worked for me before. Let me try this anti-diet way. Mm. Sometimes we need to be in the what the heck mode in order to try this new thing. And if that's where you're at, go for it. <laughs> try the permission way. Try the permission route and see how that feels. See if you're rewarded by your body by eating that thing. Most times we are. That's a really cool experience to have. And then ask yourself the question, do you want to have this experience again? Is this something that you could allow yourself to do again? Do you feel satisfied? Was that a positive food experience? Hmm. Juicy. I like it. Every intention, every experience that you have with food, by the way, is not going to always be super hyper intentional. Like that's not what intuitive eating is about. I just want to say that as like a disclaimer. But when we're adding new foods in, it's kind of fun to be hyper vigilant because it's like we want to be with the experience. We want to be um in a in a position where we can fully like be in it and enjoy it and savor it and notice it and notice the body and notice the food and get curious about if about, about the experience itself. So not every, you know, encounter with food is going to be positive with intuitive eating. That's not true. But what can be true is that we can be intentional with food to see how the body responds. And that's a cool sugar experiment for you today. Cool. So yeah, maybe try it out. Let me know how that goes. Let me know how that goes. You will be okay. You will not be unhealthy if you allow yourself to eat the sugary thing. In fact, you might actually achieve more satisfaction. You might decrease any kind of out of control binging episodes with food, and you might find more freedom and bliss in the process. You might feel like a sense of worthiness, a sense of like reclaiming that power that sugar once had over you. So um, awesome. I'm always here for support. Find me at aliciabrown.rdn on Instagram. That's where you can find me. If you have any questions about the conversation that we had today, you can find me there. Also, if you found this conversation about sugar impactful in any way, don't hesitate. Screenshot on your phone, screenshot this episode and share it on social media. Tag me at aliciabrown.rdn um, and I'll reshare it too. Thank you so much for doing that. It helps me get this message out and maybe into the ears of more listeners to um, listen to this um, wherever you get your podcast or if you're watching it on YouTube as well. Thank you so much for that. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to the show. I always appreciate new subscriptions. Then you will get a notice every Monday and Thursday when a new episode launches. And don't hesitate to also rate the episode as well. Those are all the greatest gifts. This, this podcast is my pride and joy. I just so appreciate launching episodes twice a week. If you have any questions, definitely let me know. And best of luck incorporating more sugar into the diet and seeing how your body responds. Um, be gentle with yourself. Be compassionate with yourself. This can be really hard. There can be a lot of fears that come up here. I so get it. I'm so holding you in that. That was me too. So trust me, I get how hard this can be. But there's a lot of freedom, bliss, body attunement, and power. On the other side, flavor, satisfaction on the other side. So I'm holding that vision for you and for all of us as a collective as we start to experiment with what what life might look like when we allow ourselves more permission to eat foods we enjoy. Enjoy the day, enjoy the week, and we'll see you on Thursday's episode. Take care. (laughs) 